let you lead off and then we'll jump into questions. Yeah. Um, just first credit to Auburn. Uh, played a, a better game than we played and, and came out with a win. Um, I want to just um, thank our senior players that we honored tonight. Uh, I want to thank them for investment in the program and for what they've done over their time here to, to leave this program in a better place. Um, wish that we could have sent them out the way that they deserve to be sent out, but we weren't able to get it done tonight. And when I look at it, uh, here before looking at the film, I see um, the six three and outs on offense, um, some of which involve drops, you know, just us making the routine play. Um, I see um, 215 yards of offense on four plays. Um, and so just the need for consistency, consistency across the board, I think in all three phases. Um, and um, you can't be a good team until you're a consistent team. Uh, again, I saw flashes of promising play, and I saw guys stepping up, um, but did not do enough to um, get within one score there late and have a chance to put a little pressure on Auburn. So um, with that, I'm happy to open up with questions. I guess how do you, you as you mentioned, like the 200-plus yards on the four plays, how do you kind of explain the continued mental mistakes throughout the course of the season when the goal you've said is force teams to do the sustained long drives where they have to string plays together? Um, those aren't all mental mistakes. I mean, we'll, we'll look at them, but I mean, I, I saw physical, you know, physical mistakes. I saw, um, particularly on the second run, um, you know, again, m most times y you don't have to play a perfect game to down the ball. And there are going to be times when a team is able to move you or root you out of a gap where it gets into your second and third level and you down the ball. And we didn't down the ball in the second one. We had two opportunities that I saw uh, to, to get that done. Um, and again, that's not, that, that's us needing to, to, play, to play better, play within the structure better. The first run, to me, I, I, I've got to look at, but um, you know, there, there's, there's seven people to block, and we have seven people to fit. And there's, you know, on the on the boundary side, there are three three guys for three gaps, um, and I think it hit in the field A gap, but it was a it was a weak side zone run play, um, and um, so we have to be on edges and be playing in our gaps. And the, the ultimately, when you get a breakout like that, you need to have someone layering the defense. Um, to down the ball, and we didn't have it, and it got out going fast, and we weren't able to track it down. Um, the long pass that went for a score, I would say, would be a little bit more of what you're talking about in terms of mental mistakes. Um, they they motioned down to a cut split. We're zoning off um, in quarters coverage, and you know we have to understand. Dericky takes the over, and and Trudell's there to play. The, uh, the seven cut, and um, we had a young player just, just kind of get out leverage, chasing inside and get beat. And, you know, again, I, I think, um, you know, obviously in, in, the, in the grand scheme of things, in this game, those things make all the difference. But, um, you know, you isolate one side of the ball, and I think you tell only part of the story, right? It's, it's um, again, you, you possess the ball on offense, you, you force, um, their offense to stay on the sideline. You know, we, we get we, we're, if we're able to score points offensively, and um, you, you just change the whole landscape of the game. So right now we, we, we look at this and we say, you know, we need to play a, a closer to perfect game defensively. Um, you know, certainly there's going to be opportunities for us to, to clean up, but um, th this to me is more about three phases interlocking and and um, and just you know playing a, a more complete game as a team. Uh, would be would be my uh, my feeling. A few moments before Bryce Cowan's pick six, Federal third and twenty. Can you just, just stop and talk about why you decided to elect to run the ball? I know you ended up hitting them back on the one yard line, but you just walk, walk them through that. Um, well, yeah. Sometimes, and again, we've we've talked about this all season. You, you have to make good decisions with the ball, and so it's not uncommon with third and extra long that you're gonna you're gonna run the ball to secure possession and put your punt team out there. I mean, that's what you're doing. Um, you know, when it's third and manageable, or you feel like uh, third and, and convert, you'll 
you'll have an opportunity to do that. We also feel like anytime we can pin the opponent back, you know, again, possession of the ball is critical. Um, you force that ball down the field and you throw an interception, we're having a totally different conversation. So um, it's a conservative call, but it's a call that's meant to play for the next possession. Um, and um, I, that's not uncommon in football to do that. Now, again, if it's third and eight or third and ten even, you know, you might have a different approach. Um, but, you know, sometimes you're still running it there to, to get within a fourth down and go. Um, I was pleased with this, the complementary element of that, of that decision and, and how, we, how that ended up playing out for us. Uh, even if we force a punt there rather than the pick, you're forcing them into a tight punt situation where you're, you're going to get field position coming back out. So um, the decision there is to play for the next possession. I think that's, that's um, a sound decision. And I think specifically where we've had problems forcing the ball down the field kept us out of a, a turnover um, circumstance. You guys had about two thirds of your yards in the last 18 minutes. Do you think you guys called the game too conservatively early, or was that just yards are easier to come by when you're down 24? Um, you know, I think there's there's probably somewhere in between. I think there's uh, um, a reason to to want to get the ball down the field more early. I think also, you know, the the you know in the old Miss game and certainly tonight too, it's. It's um, it's just finding completions. You know, I, I, I I'll have to look at the first half and look at our third downs, but I, I know two of those were drops. I think we had an opportunity on one of the third downs on a, a completion to Jaden McGowan to puncture and to get conversion. You, you, we we've just got to get the first first down in drives, and when you're not doing that, um, you know, certainly it looks it looks conservative or it it, it feels like it's just not in rhythm and. Uh, once you get the first down, you start moving the ball, and especially as you approach midfield, you get opportunities to open the game up and get the ball down the field. Um, and so, th th you know, there's frustration there just in terms of the inability to get the first first down and get the drive started. But um, I certainly thought that, um, again, the way we moved the ball late, I thought Kim made good decisions um, up until the interception. He was able to get some yards with his legs too, which is nice to see. And um, uh, we're going to look back at the first half and um, they're early, in the early going of the third quarter and just we're going to find ways to play better. What are you seeing from Langston Patterson uh, the last couple games, the last few games? We're right, seeing a young player emerge um, as, a, as a, a dynamic player. I mean, I think, uh, you know, his, his, um, his play in the, in the, in the second drive defensively um, immediately I felt like kind of started to change you know the momentum back um, after we absorbed that long run um, he's a good football player and so I'm pleased with how he's progressed and I want to continue to see him progress and um, you know again he's still early in on his career with us so excited about what what uh, what lies ahead for him what was the thinking on two quarterbacks um, I, I, we, we feel like we have something in Walter Taylor that, that can be a difference. We feel like um, he's a guy that uh, both in the, in the immediate uh, moment but also in the future is going to be um, you know, a good player for us. And, um, and, and it's just, it, again, it's a way to maybe open up a run game. It's a way to um, create the defense to defend all 11, um, a situation where they have to defend all 11 positions. Um, and you know, we, we wanted to we wanted to get eyes on him, and he's earned the right to be out there. Um, obviously, we didn't get we didn't use him as much as we used him. I thought Ken played well. Um, you know, we, we had a chance on a on a throw to to JB that we we just we just missed um, a little high. Um, there's probably more out there for Walt, but um, you know, tonight was Ken's night, and I thought Ken played pretty well. You mentioned the third down. You guys were on seven in the first half on third down and two for 14 ultimately. What's been so difficult about third down and what do you point at, what point to is the coaching point to fix that moving forward? Well, tonight our yards to average yards to gain was, they were, it was too, too long. You know, I think we were uh, nearing 10 yards um, on average to gain. So that's gonna, that's gonna put yourself in a, you're putting yourself in a position where you're, you're opened up to blitzes and rushes and coverages that, um, they create uh, challenges. Thought we had trouble in protection at times tonight. We'll have to look at the film. I thought there was a little too much pressure 
in those moments. But but again, you know, I I, I look at it too. Um, you know, we had some uh, we had some drops in there too, and um, and some opportunities to make routine plays that we didn't make. And so um, it's a combination of those things. Um, and you know, we're, we're going to have to look at it, you know, holistically and find a way to move and improve and get better. Was it your original plan to play Ken for the majority of the game and only use Walter on those few drives, or was that, you know, an in-game uh, flow thing? We wanted to get Walt um, some time. We wanted to build that into the plan, and um, I think it was just not. I think it was just a matter of, um, you know, what we felt like was opening the offense up the best. Um, we were never really, really able to get the quarterback run game going with Walton there, and so you know that was something that provided a spark to us last week, and it wasn't there tonight. Um, you know, and again, I we felt like Ken was had 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 what we needed to to get the ball in play and and get the ball moving. Um, we just we found that rhythm a little late. I know CJ is coming back from the injury. Is there also a disciplinary situation going on there? He just wasn't available to play tonight, and. Um, you know, we'll 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 look at it moving forward. He's got to he's got to keep working himself belt back healthy. And, uh, hopefully, as we get through it, we'll find a way to get him out there. That little Shepard dropped the two funds. Were you planning to uh, go to Jaden McGowan after that, or was that decision made in the game? That was just a response to kind of mis the mishandling of the punts. Um, you know, Will's been consistent for us back there, but um, just felt like. Uh, wasn't his night tonight, and you know we, we needed to make a change to to get um, possession of the ball. You know that's the the number one priority there. And Jaden was able to actually create some some uh, explosive play back there, and you know um, I was pleased with that. Again, going back to you know handling the punts. I mean the one that we mishandled, I think, put possession inside the ten yard line to start, and that's that's always a situation where. Um, you know your mistakes are amplified when you're when you're backed up that way, and so um, again, you know, Jaden came in there, was able to provide a spark in the return game. He did it as a kickoff returner too. I uh, was excited about that, and, and want to see more of that moving forward. Along with Quincy Patterson, several of your Nashville area guys are uh, young guys who are starting to show some promise. Junior Cheryl, uh, Brian Longwell, Lumpen Humphreys. Has that been a point of encouragement for you guys that some of these local recruits that you brought in are? Out. Yeah, I mean, we uh, we feel strongly about um, first of all the, the the talent level here in, in our footprint and um, and the guys that are in this program um, that we've recruited here locally. Um, we feel really good about them, and you know, to see those guys having success is is the silver lining right now for us. You know, we got some young, talented people that are stepping into um, to some good performance. Um, again, we have to put it together as a team and, and to be more consistent as a team, but certainly encouraging to see uh, to see those guys having success here early in their career. What have you seen from AJ Newberry in the last few weeks? Well, he, he's you know he's got the ability to break it, and uh, we saw that today. It's exciting to you know I thought he and Seti both um, at times looked really good running the ball, and um, AJ had the long uh, there of. Uh, 29, which to me was a, you know, you saw him hit the accelerator and he can run. Um, so, you know, you know, he's just, this is his second game plan. Um, we'll, we'll keep seeing him here at the end. Obviously, he's saved a red shirt year. Um, it's exciting to, to, uh, to see what he's capable of and we want to keep bringing him along. Uh, he's got a bright future out of him. Anything else? Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.